What I wanted to tell you is most of the cyberbullying that is happening to our kids are happening through Instagram. That's the and then followed by Twitter. Instagram and Twitter are on the high side in terms of uh, the platforms they use. So as parents, we ought to be worried when you see your parents, your children uh, on Instagram or on Twitter or Facebook and Snapchat, yeah, just a bit. But those two Instagram is the highest, followed by Twitter. So it's also a cause for concern as parents. And then this one uh, is also addressing if you have been charged of bullying, did you report to anyone? Okay, and then uh, I talked about that. Yes, and then 16 said yes, 120 said no, and then 128 said uh, that's, that's the total. <clears throat> and then for this one now, I wanted to, to specify to see is it the boys who are bullied more or the girls who are bullied more in that 17.5%. And then I only found out that only three boys say they do cyberbullying. And females are say the high percentage. 38 of them say they've been in cyberbullying, but three of them say three of them say we've been cyberbullying, three males. To me, I was like, okay, there are two things that happen here. It's either the boys are too tough. They don't want to admit, or maybe they are the bullies. Just you know, it's just um, my thinking. I I have to go deeper into that. So and then I wanted to walk you. I want to walk you through this comment. Some of the comments that children were writing when they were feeling the person. You know, someone said cyberbullying is often something people overlook, and it's often taken as something small. So people often do not report. That it was long lasting effect on that second person. This was one of the child who wrote it. But normally people overlook it. They think, uh uh, it doesn't, you know, because you are not hurt, you know, there's nothing with your physical body is fine, so why should you be worried? But it, it doesn't happen like that. And then the other one said, sometimes it's hard to say it to anyone because no one understands. Which means this is a cry for help. Our children are saying we need to be understood. Sometimes it happens, but no one knows it. People are committing suicide because of cyberbullying, and we don't even know it. Sometimes some of the cyberbullying, I mean, some, some of the suicidal cases that we hear, we don't even know. It might be cyberbullying. Because so, so many times we hear so-and-so has committed suicide. What was the reason? No, we don't know. We just found him dead, or we just found her dead, and we don't know the reason behind it. And then if there are a lot of negativity around you, you begin to raise really that negativity too. Which means maybe if things are not okay at home, you find maybe the child is also want to empty on, a, on, another, on another child, that kind of thing. So the home has to be positive so that the child can carry that positive vibe to school or to his friends. People support the bully by liking their content or following the bully on Instagram. And then I didn't report to anyone because I thought my parents might not react well. Which means they're also worried that maybe if I tell my dad or if I tell my mom, she may not even understand me. They'll think, ah, what is, what is wrong? There's nothing. You know, she just said, you forget about it. Ignore it. This is one of the child crying out loud. And then in school, students are not aware of what type of bullying is all about. This is one of the kids who wrote that. That they are not aware, which means maybe the majority is not aware of what uh, cyberbullying is all about. So there is need for awareness. It is very frequent that students may not feel comfortable reporting to authorities or, or fear of being laughed at. You know, kids have got this kind of if you are side for that, you know, ma'am, some of this is uh, said this this year to me yesterday. And then, you know, they are afraid. Probably you might say, ah, but you grow up. Don't worry about him. Or don't worry about him. You know, that kind of thing. So it's also one of their concerns that sometimes they'll think, ah, I'm, I'll be regarded as weak. Um, Cyberbullying is very common, and I have witnessed it through my friends. And it's a nasty experience which lowers your confidence and self esteem, which means they actually know the disadvantages of cyberbullying, such as self esteem or self confidence. And she or he has actually experienced through the friends, which means they are bystanders and they are effects to that.
And it's not something new, but it's never addressed in schools and communities. Just one of the things we say that. I thought alone, I couldn't trust anyone. This was in grade seven. When I was reading this, I was saying to, my, I said to myself, in grade seven, and, we, and most of us think this is the thing of the first world, but somebody explained in grade seven. When we, when we least expect it, that's when it, happen, it happened. Those who notice it never bother to top it. I cried a lot, and now most of them tell me they could not do anything at that particular moment. This is one of the girls who was, who was writing this. I thought for her that she surely these kids they really need a help. They really need a hand. Um, I began to distance myself from everybody, from everyone, even my siblings, because I felt as if anyone could criticize me, even my family. What does that tell us? It means maybe the person or the child is not very close uh, to the to the siblings or to the parents, so much that he or 